Today on What It's Like, super cool. I have never seen this car in person until this year, 1961 Pontiac Ventura. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this, you just found a car at a local car show that you wanna know more information about because it was totally awesome and you've never seen it before. So you get on the good old YouTube and you start looking for that epic car that you just saw. Problem is, every title that you click on has the car but no information about the car just some cheesy song in the background as some guy is walking around it. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics. We dive in deep with the specs, period ads, and show what these cars were like. It's in the title. If that sounds of interest, a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. For those that have never made it to the end of an episode, it's worth watching the whole episode because there's Name That Tune, there's also previews for our next show, and there's something completely random at the end of each episode. Today's random moment is totally cool, and it's at the very end, after the whole toodaloo and everything. This car, this 1961, Pontiac Ventura is for sale at Classic Auto Mall, located in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. For more information, pricing, and pictures on the car, be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk 61 Pontiac. 1961 Pontiac was downsized, and Pontiac introduced the Tempest, which was their sport compact offering, which was available both as a car and as a wagon. And it's important to note that it doesn't look anything like the bigger series counterparts. It actually has the grill from 59. It looks sort of like a beak. Pontiac offered two series, the Junior Series, which rode a 119 inch wheelbase. The cars that were associated with the Junior Series were the Catalina, Ventura, Bonneville, Custom Safari. The Senior Series rode a 123 inch wheelbase and that included the Star Chief and the Bonneville. Standard features on the Catalina, turn signals, oil filter, lighter, sun visors, electric wipers, five tubeless black wall tires. If you stepped up and you got the Ventura, you got everything that came with the Catalina, plus custom steering wheel, electric clock, right passenger front ashtray, and different interior colors and appointments. Stepping up the Star Chief, you get everything that is found on the Ventura, plus longer wheelbase, the 123 inch long wheelbase, plus two speed wipers and different interior colors and appointments. Bonneville was sitting at the top and you got everything standard that was previously mentioned, plus rear seat foam cushions, padded instrument panel, courtesy lights, different interior appointments. Pontiac Ventura could be had in two body styles. Two-door sports coupe, more often referred to as bubble top, which was a pillarless coupe option, or four-door Vista hardtop, which is like their flat top offering, but it's weird because nobody in GM circles ever calls this the flat top. They call it the Vista hardtop because it sounds way cooler to say Vista. All right, moving on to styling. Looking at the 60 on the top, 61 on the bottom, starting in the front, I personally love both of these front end designs. The 61 does not look as busy to me. I love how the grill angles up. It looks like 45, but I could be wrong. 45 degree angle on the 61 going back to the beak nose in the front sort of it looks more like a beak on the tempest the 60 has like an elongated teardrop shape the 61 has two trialed out sections with a point in the center for a center line which rolls into the grill section turn signals have been moved to the corners of the bumpers as opposed to the grill region on the 60. Moving to the side profile, the 61 has clean and subtle lines compared to the 60, which is more sculpted, more in your face. But on the 61, they are stellar. Wait until we do the walk around because this picture just doesn't do it justice. It is my new favorite GM product with the only car coming close in the early 60s being the 60 Buick Electra. Roofline is roughly the same. The windshields are completely different. The 61 does not have a wraparound windshield and the pillars are swept back, giving it this bubble top appearance. Front bumper on the side profile is bigger on the 61, moving to the rear quarter section and the rear end. In this angle, the rear looks more domed on the 61. The 61 has modest fins, which are super attractive. Just a really nice detailed rear end design. 
I love the tail light situation. Backup lights are mounted lower in the bumpers on the 61 and mounted just below the brake lights on the 60. Also, there is a center line on the 61 deck lid. Moving to the dashboard layout, I sort of like the 60 dash better because I'd rather have traditional gauges as opposed to a light. But with that said, the 60 looks cleaner and sleeker. I love the translucent steering wheel on the 61 better than the 60. What do you guys think? Which design do you guys like better, 61 or 60? Let's talk specs. 210 inches long, 78.6 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 119 inches. It weighs 3,685 pounds. Price, $2,970, which is equivalent to you spending $29,481.17 in the year 2023. Total, 1961 Pontiac production was 340,250 units. Of that number, total Ventura was 27,209 units. Of that number, 13,297 were the two-door sports coupe variety, and that leaves 13,912 as the four-door Vista hardtop. Moving on to engines, if I miss any, be sure to add them in the comment section below. Pontiacs are always the hardest to do because they offer so many different engine options. Side note, power output also varies depending on transmission you got. So if you got the Hydromatic, which was an automatic three speed by 1961, output would be higher than say a standard transmission for reasons I can't explain. If you know the reason in the comment section below, 389 cubic inch displacement, V8, 6.4 liters. It makes anywhere between 215 to 368 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. Anywhere between 390 to 425 pound-feet of torque at 3200 RPM. With a bore of 4.1 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches, it features hydraulic lifters. Another caveat, so the higher the horsepower, it doesn't seem to matter if it's mated to the hydromatic or the four-speed manual. So these power figures are based on the 348 horsepower rating when mated to the three-speed hydromatic. Zero to 60 could be had in seven seconds with a theoretical top speed of 140 miles per hour while achieving an average fuel economy rating of 8.1 miles to the gallon. When mated to a four-speed manual, theoretical top speed is 144 miles per hour. An also equally impressive 5.7 zero to 60 time Average fuel economy, 9.8 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the biggest and baddest engine on offer, 421 cubic inch displacement V8. It's important to point out they had an early version and they had a later version. The early version made 373 horsepower at 5,400 RPM, 430 pound-feet of torque. The later version made 405 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 460 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Five main bearings, hydraulic lifters. These figures are for the late version when mated to a four-speed manual transmission. Zero to 60 could be had in 5.2 seconds. Theoretical 150 mile an hour top speed while achieving nine miles to the gallon. All right, let's talk styling. So let's start here in the center. Look at all of these lines. Notice how it's like trod out here, comes into a point there all the way down in the front. Just look at how that is. It's kind of a weird shape. And people thought the Edsel looked like women genitalia. That's all I'm gonna say. Over here, look at how this is raked in. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting design, this. Check out these fins in the front. Notice how it's more pointy here than it is back here. It kind of tapers into the body as it goes towards the windshield. And I hope this camera is doing a good job of catching all of the lines. This thing got a lot of lines going on. Look at this whole bumper situation. Look at all of those lines inside there. I love this part here. It's dished in. It says Ventura. 
That's funny. Ventura Highway was just playing. Such nice, clean lines on this car. Look at these fins. This is a really nice looking car. Look at all of everything that's going on there. There's four or five, maybe even six different lines. Just look at how absolutely massive this door is. Coming back around and talking about the door panel itself, it's a plushy material at the top and then it goes down into a vinyl material. It feels vinyl on the top too. It just has a like a like a padding underneath. Door lock, armrest, door handle to pull the door shut. Notice it's all decked out in chrome slash bright work stainless steel. So here door handle to get out they put aftermarket window switches in vent windows are crank operated and it's just this like little teardrop shape vent window which is really cool pedal box down here high beam switches on the floor where it should be in my opinion this is a vent which is right behind here emergency brake and or parking brake release. This is the parking brake. Brake, gas pedal. Take a look at this interior. Nice quality shot. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person looks like. And I have to say, I absolutely love this steering wheel. I just got out of the 59 Plymouth not sure when you're going to see this or when this is going to go up, but the steering wheel is very similar, but it's thinner than the 59 Plymouth. And it's blue instead of yellow. And it just looks so classy. Underneath the steering wheel, this is how much space is underneath the steering wheel. And the reason I show this is because a lot of times these steering wheel columns, they don't move, they don't telescope. So if you don't fit underneath the steering wheel, that's going to be a problem and you'll either have to put another steering wheel on which is i absolutely hate when people do that or you know find a different seating position or something on to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right headlights wipers amp meter left turn signal indicator speedometer odometer with idiot lights for coolant temperature and oil pressure right turn signal indicator, gasoline gauge, radio, electric clock, heater and ventilation controls, drive modes read, park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Up above, sun visors, and these sun visors are huge. There's my hand for reference. Nice rear view mirror here. Sun visor for the passenger, also huge. This is what I look like sitting behind the wheel of the Ventura tons of room in this car there's tons of headroom it doesn't feel that big it's actually very nice and airy in here because the greenhouse is nice it doesn't feel like you're really in a car it feels like you're in an open um just sitting outside really the seats are nice feel great ashtray here for the driver this is a cigarette lighter for the driver ashtray for the passenger Funny thing is they have to use the same ash, same cigarette lighter over here. There isn't one over there. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. It's absolutely massive glove box, but it's a very small opening. Yeah, it doesn't fit. It could fit long ways. There shouldn't be an issue with that. That is an absolutely massive glove box. It's just 
the opening isn't so big and it's got nice cup holder indentations in there if you go to the drive-in or whatever you guess the thought process was you could put a bottle of coke on there but notice this protrudes out further than this it's almost like two tiers like up here protrudes more than down here but I guess it's it's all on the same level it's just this one piece right here sticks out further getting in the back seat just simply slide the seat forward pivots out of the way to give you ample space to get in the back back there notice the back of the seat and how it comes up like that here's what the front looks like from the back let's take a gander real quick at the greenhouse and or glass to pillar ratio which is really great in this car like see there isn't that many pillars it's letting a lot of light in so it almost doesn't even feel like there's a top on this car back there this is what the rear view looks like from the back seat i absolutely love that rear design not the best rear end i've seen all year but it's up there i like the fins nice big shelf back there that shelf is huge back here very interesting so there is a dome light there and it works the battery's on ashtray as well as armrest there isn't a coat hook there there isn't a coat hook on that side but everything that we mentioned so far is the ashtray armrest and interestingly enough there's window cranks back here but the front passengers had electric windows that they put in after the fact for reasons I can't explain. So this one's a little bit tricky. So this is the hood release. I have to pick up on this and it's heavy, but the secondary catch is right behind it. Pick up on the hood, it's really heavy, but it goes up really far, which is great. This is the secondary catch and you move it like that. So just take a step back. That's how high the hood goes. Goes up nice and high so you can work on it. Look at that tri power. Tri power uh, refers to three carburetors. It's got three two barrel carburetors. And there's three of them, and, and that's where tri power comes from. Alternator, water pump, power steering pump brake master cylinder notice it's a single master cylinder but it's got power brakes 12 volt battery on to the pros and cons on the positive side terrific period styling great road cars bright colorful trimmings some performance and appearance options are quite rare available affordable good if not great investment against it there isn't much but some body trim parts are getting predictably scarce now now it's time for Name That Tune. I'm looking for the first person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title. First person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. We also have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook, no worries. My email will be linked in the description. So if you want to shoot me a message directly, I will answer it and get back to you. So if I catch you on there or on Facebook or you send me an email, just know that I appreciate all the support. And until next time, wait, here are some scenes for our next episode. Premiering 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, which is going to be our new time slot from here on out, unless things change, because that is when most people are active according to YouTube analytics. So to make everything fair for Name That Tune, I figured that would be the best. 1956 Ford Crescent Line Victoria Hardtop. This was the most beautiful high-end Ford that I've ever been in. And that's coming up Monday at 4.30 on What It's Like. And until that time... Hey everyone, this is completely random, but this is my daughter, Chloe Ray, and her favorite song is Little GTO by the Ronnie and the Daytonas, and we're going to sing a little bit for you. So how's it go? Little GTO, man you're looking fine, three deuces and a four speed in a 389. Listen to her, tack him up now, listen to her, why, yeah, yeah, what happens next?
We're going to wind it up. We're going to wind up GTO. We're going to GTO. Then what happens? Yeah, yeah, little GTO. Ah, little GTO. Good job. Did you make it yet? Did you make it yet?